Hey folks, welcome to the second sword guide. I'm gonna try to cover whatever else I haven't so far. It may take me a few more videos, but I'll do the best I can. First thing I'm gonna cover with the sword are actually its parries. Since I know many players have asked what are the parry timings of various abilities. So fortunately for the sword, parry timing is basically identical on every single one. So you have back wave, which I've talked about uh, already but in case you weren't familiar with the timing it's basically the same as phantom burst counter timing same goes for haze same goes for water shadow and same goes for leaf glide but i'm going to show you something that you may not have known about both of these parries so haze and water shadow actually work against small skeleton all right so you can do the haze follow-up as well um same applies to water shadow water shadow too this unfortunately does not apply to Leaf Glide, which really sucks. So, so I can do that Water Shadow just fine, but I can't do it for Leaf Glide. You'll just get hit. So yeah, Spirit Cow Skeleton's giving you trouble. Well, not anymore. At least you know how to parry them. And I don't know why this animation thing works in the first place, but it just does. All right, let's be done with you. Take the hammer and I'm gonna reset. You may want to know why should you do Leaf Glide in the first place? Now, what Leaf Glide provides are two things. One, it gives you a damage boost and you can attack pretty quickly right afterwards. But you may have noticed there that the end and look you can see right now the attack buff is separate it is something that actually stacks which is so cool it is an attack buff that is in its own category and stacks so hey you can get a little bit of a damage buff on top of everything else so yeah definitely a neat option you want if you're really interested in maximizing damage stuff but if that is not of your fancy then let's just discuss Haze, Water Shadow. Their damage output is fairly identical. Um, it might seem a little higher at times for Haze simply because you may have the thrust passive as I do. It, it looked about the same. You may want to know, hey, what about if I don't decide to do the follow-up, what happens? Well, see he dodges away. Dodge away. So you can use that predictability to your advantage. Not all enemies will dodge away, but for sure, if you go for if you go for the follow-ups on any of these dedicated parries, they will always succeed. Well, not always. I've had them whiff in very few scenarios, but for the most part, they are intended for you to get a reward. So yeah, definitely go for them. They're pretty cool. Pretty nice. Yeah, I like them. Again, the timing's all pretty, pretty much the same. But they're pretty snazzy. And what's nice, and in case I forgot to mention this, when these do succeed, unlike Backwave Tempest, they have iframes during the entire animation. When you succeed. So when the, when the, you know, the animation changes, you have iframes during that. Whereas with Backwave Tempest, things can throw you off. So be very careful. But there are many moments where I've actually just, if I just like want to parry fish an enemy to death, it's safer to use these ones over the alternative. But all right, enough about the parries. Again, brief summary, all got the phantom burst counter timing and they're pretty cool. And you generally want to go for haze two and water shadow two because not only do you get iframes, you get the guaranteed hit, which is super good. And they usually do a good amount of key damage. Awesome abilities. Let's talk about other things though. Uh, pertaining to the sword just general all-purpose type stuff that i think will be very useful i'll talk about more of these niche abilities such as sword of meditation which i believe has the most damage on the sword possible but has a huge animation time i think there's some other properties but it's going to be difficult for me to capture that on on video and then reverse impact which is a new ability which may confuse players as to how to use it and i'll talk about that when i can uh, Swords, mid stand stuff, there's a lot. There's Chroma Sword Dance, there's Severing Spin, there's Blue Moon. So I'll get to that when I can. But let's just talk about more bread and butter things that you can work with and that I think that are really valuable. So I I think Morning Moon's utility is kind of obvious. 
Um, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but in case I didn't, I'll talk about it now. Morning Moon is basically a big power play. I mean, it's not like a super power play, but it does a good amount of damage. And not to mention, it's generally pretty good for horn breaks as well. So I like using it quite a lot. It's good, reliable, something you can get from the get-go, and is a safe move to use. Not too much of a commitment to animation time. You really can't go wrong with it. So I would highly recommend that you get comfortable with Morning Moon. And yeah, I like it a lot. So really not too much to say there. Just a good ability. It's just simple and straightforward. I'll talk about Shadow Sword in a moment. I know I talked about the three quick draws already, but let me discuss... Let me discuss Flowing Shadow. So Flowing Shadow actually got nerfed in terms of its damage output compared to Neil 1. But there's one thing I want you to pay attention to, and that is much more important than the damage output that it has. So let's follow the trajectory my character is going to take. Now, I know this seems obvious. It, it's like it's obvious that, hey, of course it moves. Of course you move around, right? But yeah, I get that it's obvious, but don't underestimate that. Moving around your opponent, circling an opponent is huge. There are many moments you can just outright avoid attacks and perform an attack of your own. And this ability is fantastic for that. So as opposed to just dodging, I can move around them. And for whatever reason, they decided to give this ability hyper armor, which is so good. So yeah, you can just move around. Let's see if I can time it with an attack of his. Oh, I'm hitting him too rapidly. Come on. Oh, it does a modest amount of break damage as well. If you time it right and do it earlier compared to when an enemy is going to attack, there are many moments I've just straight up avoided things. So, you know the snake heads, the Rokurokubis or whatever? Their wake up attack? I've actually avoided them. On, on You know, when they wake up, they do the spin. If you time it just right, as soon as you can, Blowing shadow them and you will not only avoid their attack just barely But you'll get the hit off and it feels so good It's a repositioning tool as well while you're dealing damage so you don't just have to stand idly by let's see if I have if I'm lucky enough Oh, I broke his horn. That's great Dang it if I, I should have waited to do it after the kick avoided kind of cool huh it'll take some practice for you to get familiar with certain attacks but it is quite awesome i'm gonna try to demonstrate its value once again i use it against many enemies that i know are gonna like counterattack, like many bosses i'm like okay i know they're gonna counterattack now so let me have my next hit be flowing shadow and so then they'll like try to attack in front of them should have waited dude all right come on but yeah, so you can move around an enemy in a clockwise fashion. As you saw right there, I avoided the burst attack. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, there are many moments it works really well. Come on, I need you to do the kick. And... Aw, oh, I whiffed that. But I've done it before. And it's pretty cool. So don't underestimate that ability despite the loss in damage. It's quite awesome. And that's actually something that really, in my opinion, really separates uh, some of the more skilled players from others, is when they're able to use abilities to do multiple things at once. It's actually something I like to see in my combo mask, personally. But, okay, so Flowing Shadow. You do attacks while circling the enemy. What's the utility of that? Well, you're repositioning and doing damage. Super awesome. Super awesome. You can get behind them and go from there. It's super good. There's a bit of a rev of time, so you need to do this in advance, but it's super good. Okay, um, I'll leave Sword Cube for a bit. Let's talk about Shadow Sword in general. So Shadow Sword applies to all the stances, and it's a great square ender for the sword. Highly recommend you use it. Now the purpose of this is quite simple. It is pretty much just for key damage, and it's pretty awesome. It's a good amount of key damage. If I can hit with it, that would be really nice. You know, this was a great demonstration. Let me try again. Okay. Good amount of key damage. Not too bad. Nothing like amazing, but it's it's pretty valuable. 
And then what recently they added with one of the patches is that you can actually follow up Shadow Sword with Light and Darkness. And Light and Darkness is just really awesome to have. And I wish the sort of treatment in terms of combo follow-ups applied to every weapon, but that's not the case. But yeah, got a nice good damage follow-up. That's a good chunk of damage. So you can turn you can turn and attack into a reasonable damage dealer as well. Now there is quite a bit of recovery time, but it's pretty damn powerful. I would recommend that you get in the habit of using this and it can just help the sword feel so much fresher when you know, hey, I don't just have to do quick attacks into strong enders, I can do strong attacks into a quick attack combo and just like go from there. So yeah, it's just, it's like all purpose sort of move. And look at that sweet hitbox that it has. If I can do it right, can I do it right? Look at that sweet vertical hitbox. And yes, you can break horns with it as well, due to the verticality of it, if you are positioned properly. And yeah, it feels extra good to nail. It's just a pretty good, all-purpose, safe, powerful move. Helps reset enemies for potential combos. I like using it in conjunction with Soul Course since the recovery time of the ability is a little too long for my taste. So I'll usually cancel it with the Yokai ability to make things feel extra special, extra fast. So yeah, Shadow Sword is for key damage, but Light and Darkness is good for two extra hits. So yeah, good power play, definitely worthwhile in terms of using, and the fact that you can use it in all three stances makes it so good because it gives you the incentive to actually use the different ones for different purposes in terms of hitboxes and whatnot. I would say the one I like the most might be the mid stance strong one, uh, but I do tend to use high stance strong if I really know I can get that animation time off. But yeah, try that out. I'm sure you'll like it. Shadow Sword is really good in that regard. So other things that we can talk about, I guess, let's see. A kick is pretty obvious, do key damage. Data Sword also can do key damage. Um, I already talked about Tiger Sprints. A true and through. True and through, I'll talk about that next since that applies to all the stances. So true and through looks very similar to the Odachi's Devastating Rush and I think they share a lot of the same assets. It recently got uh, buffed and it's definitely a worthy ability now. But what I like to use it for is pretty much just a nice gap closer. Going for the full charge is awesome. Get a speed up. If you do just a quick charge, it's not that impressive. It's okay, but go for that full charge now. It has that sweet, sweet lunge. So let me show you a cool example of when you can get the benefit of that lunge distance. All right, let me get him actually low on key, or sorry, low on health. And I think he'll demonstrate it. Come on, I'm not hitting him. Good job, me. All right, you getting there yet? Can you? All right. Dang it, he's too low on key. Oh, he's sorry, too low on key and health. I'll have to demonstrate that again. Come on! Alright, we'll just give you the e -pong. Come on! Come on! Okay, now you're pretty good, right? Okay, get low on key, please. Oh, that's too low. Regenerate your key. Okay. Janet, dude! Come on! Regenerate! Work with me! Come on! Cooperate, my man! Dude, this is too low on key. But basically, against many enemies, when they reel back, you can go for true and through to knock them down. Um, also, I love to input buffer with it, so I like to use yokai abilities and then fire it up, and it's a lot of fun. 
So doing that and then input buffering a true and through feels so fast. So yeah, like ball his wing, do that, go in. Doesn't have the most range, but using it right after a yokai ability feels so fast. Go okay, one more time. That one didn't work there. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Good gap closer. Decent damage dealer. But I especially love it after using a yokai ability. Because it just feels so fast. And for me, as you saw, Abran Soldier, just the projectile for the brief hit stun can give me enough setup time to do a relatively safe through and through. Of course, you can use it after a backwave tempest. There's so many attacks you can use after a backwave tempest. And it doesn't really matter. Um, I wish this guy would cooperate, but I've seen streamers like Witty Clever Name basically use True and Through right after an enemy gets knocked down, at least a human. You know, they're reeling back, and you know, if you give them an extra hit, they'll fall back down. Yeah, he'll just do True and Through and hit them, and it, it looks so cool. So, yeah, definitely awesome in terms of the gap closing department. Great ability. I'm happy that they buffed it. Okay, let's talk about other abilities. Let me actually talk about some things in low stance. So Swallow's Wing, and and I'll talk about Swallow's Wing, Heaven Flash, and Swift Step. So believe it or not, Swallow's Wing has iframes, especially with the backflip. Let's see if I can demonstrate it. Come on, let me. I have to demonstrate it with the big burst attack that he's gonna do. Now right, come on, come on, big burst attack. A lot easier with that, because then I can really plan it. Come on. Big burst time. Big burst time. You can do it. Avoided. It isn't just a repositioning tool. You can iframe with it. I've iframed through many attacks. But yeah, the timing for it is very precise. Basically, got to be in the flip. Ah, oh, I whiffed it just barely. Did a little too early. Come on, I'll try it one more time. But yes, it does have iframes on it. Come on. One more time. There you go. Wasn't that neat? I avoided it. Yes, yeah, Swallow's Wing does have iframes. And now, let me demonstrate the value of Heaven Flash as well. Heaven Flash can allow you, it doesn't necessarily have iframes per se, but you can straight up just avoid certain sweeps. So let's see if I can demonstrate it against this guy. The ability to reposition is kind of huge. You can just straight up jump over attacks. I've done it many times. Like that, for example. Also a pretty good gap closer. All right, come on, what you got? Oh, I could just dodge through him, that helped. That wasn't really what I had in mind. You can't have iframes on that. But when you jump up, you can avoid many attacks. But think of it almost like the end key soul core where you jump up. Pretty good. Also does a modest amount of key damage. Good gap closer. It also can be used to loop quite a lot of human enemies. Let me demonstrate that power real quick. Really, I, I wish the dojo had, like, I could control the AI behavior so I could work with it. Alright, let me get this chump out of key. Just show you what what I'm talking about, alright? Especially if you got a good amount of key damage. Pretty stupid. And corruption against this guy makes it even dumber. So yeah, you, that's, it's, it's a thing. Definitely a thing. So I like using Heaven Flash less for the zero key combo capacity as much as its ability to hop over stuff. There's many op opponents like Magra and Naotaka. You know, his like ice slam on the ground. Yeah, you time your Heaven Flash right, you jump right over it. It feels so good. Suiki and Yasha, same thing with their wake ups. It's super sweet. And you may ask, what about Swift Step? What's the purpose of Swift Step? It's pretty much very similar to how 
Flowing Shadow works with the reposition, except Swift Step is pretty much just the dodge. But what's cool is you can sequence abilities right after. Oh yeah, uh, one thing I needed to make clear is that Heaven Flash and Swift Step both function on quick attacks and on strong attacks as well. So yeah, the ability to reposition, set things up is pretty awesome, alright? Alright, so let's try it and let's try it with some play. Come on. Come on! Do an attack! Oh my god, I can't parry for crap. Get right behind him, get some good old damage. Pretty cool. Doesn't do any damage, but it's an on-demand uh, reposition. You can sequence all sorts of things right after. I mean, look at that. I could do the whole, you know how I did quick draw heaven flash stuff in my in one of my previous videos? So what you can do is a quick one, reposition, and it just kind of changes how your combat flow works. Oh, come on, I'm doing such a poor demonstration. I'll try that again. I'm, I'm, I'm admittedly not used to using Swift Step. I'm very familiar with using Heaven Flash. So this will even, even this will be kind of fun for me. Okay, come on. All right, we're going to block it one time. For real? Okay. Come on. Oh my god. Kind of neat, huh? Just moving around and stuff. Just changes the flow. And, you know, you're moving around and stuff. Get right behind them. Set things up as you like. Go from there. Really nice, especially for quick draws. Because you can get right behind a target and do it. Which really works with the Mystic Art, in my opinion. Oh my god, I'm so bad at it. But yeah, definitely a fun thing. So when you're playing a sword, as suggested by the Mystic Art, I, I don't think I really covered this too well, but try to get behind them so you can do even more damage. And a lot of these abilities really facilitate that repositioning factor I'm talking about. Um, you do have the other Mystic Art, which I actually use more, which helps me play it a little bit more evasively and defensively. But yeah, you definitely want to take advantage of getting behind them with all sorts of abilities and Swift Step does exactly that and it's a lot of fun so I would recommend you give it a chance but I'm very biased with Heaven, Heaven Flash if I'm to be completely honest. But okay, um, let's see what have I not covered. I think, um, let's see, I haven't covered a lot of the niche abilities yet like Kuruma Sword Dance, Severing Spin, Blue Moon. I don't believe I covered yeah, I guess you can put Swallow's Wing High Stance, but I'm not going to do that because Morning Moon's so good. Uh, what else? There's, I guess there's a difference between that. Can't really mess with that. Can't mess with that. Yeah, I think just the niche abilities, sort of meditation, uh, reverse impact. Other than that, yeah. So let's just, I'm just going to demo kind of the things I've showed so far. When it comes to the sword, just to kind of give you an idea of what to work with. So now I'm going to incorporate Flowing Shadow. Oh wait, did I not talk about Sword Key? I didn't freaking talk about Sword Key. I gotta talk about Sword Key. So, Sword Key has multi-purpose. So, one, it will hit... Let's see if I can showcase it. It will hit things around you. So, just because it may not be the most powerful key damaging ability, the fact that you can hit everything around you is never to be underestimated. So if an enemy is just a little behind you, to the side of you, well hey, Disperse your key everywhere, so it's pretty good. And then now what they added, on top of that, it is Sword of Celerity. So you do Sword Key, press Square, you get a couple of hits. And why may that, why is that cool? One, aside from the cool factor, having a follow-up can mean repeated hits against an enemy. And since it's a skill, it won't get deflected. And it keeps you in position so that you can follow up quite readily with other really handy abilities. Now one thing of note, 
that his tracking isn't necessarily the best at, say, close range, or if you're, say, off away from a target, it may not hit them. So make sure you're kind of centered towards them so that you can take advantage of the motion. Any skill with motion like that is really cool. See how I just straight up avoided it? But don't underestimate that value. But yeah, if you're just at normal sword range, you should be okay. But if you're like, let's say at an awkward range, not exactly facing him, it can kind of sometimes whiff the hits. But it's a super cool follow-up. And then if you mix all the flexible things that sword has, you can really kick some butt. So let me demonstrate, let me just demo the stuff that we've talked about so far. I'm going to try not to use anything I haven't explained. And I'll showcase it against a Yoki just to illustrate the relative power of this. So, alright, so what am I going to do? I'm going to go for a horn break, because that will just make the Yoki a lot easier. Then let's, I'm going to follow up with light and darkness, use my input buffer, doing that crap. Reposition and advance, avoided that crap. Follows Wang to get some distance. Deplete its key. Warning Moon has a power play. Or discernment to just fill things in. Oh! Get out of here. Let's do Tiger Sprint! Alright, what do we got? What do we got? Heaven Flash. Oh yeah, by the way, after a Heaven Flash, you can sequence many abilities right after. So, I like to do guard abilities straight afterwards. I can't believe I forgot to mention that. So, a cool thing you can do with Heaven Flash, even though it consumes quite a bit of key, just have a follow-up ability right after. Like, yeah, you can do attacks right after, but I like to do Heaven Flash into Sword of Discernment or something like that. Because that feels pretty fast. And I can just do some quick hits after, reset my key. Don't forget, you can use the Yokai abilities, Flowing Shadow, get out of the way, dodge attacks, and pre-shifting. Yeah, it's getting complex, right? Of course it is, because that's what I do! Just for fun, let's do a true and through as a gap closer. Oh, I'm behind him, and you are dead, good sir. So, yeah, um, that's going to take a lot of practice, but just mixing and matching all sorts of different things when it comes to the sword really helps the sword shine so well. And I really didn't use too many yokai abilities, so I'm sure you can imagine the crazy amount of possibilities that have yet to come with this weapon. But again, I have not covered some of the really cool abilities that just really showcase how much variety you can experience with this weapon, like Reverse Impact, which I know is a little weird. Um, I didn't even cover Sword of Meditation, which I know gets memed pretty hard. There's Severing Spin, Blue Moon, Kuruma Sword Dance, and so on. So yeah, we still got quite a bit, and then you'll just get to see just how much fun you can have with this weapon. So I know this video is a bit long, but I am now going to start going in depth with things. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.